Los Angeles is a city of stark contrasts where the allure of Hollywood glamour and the grit of urban reality often intertwine. Its sprawling urban landscape is both a testament to its diversity and a challenge amongst the residents. The city's vibrant cultural scene with its multitude of museums, galleries, and theaters offer a rich tapestry of experiences. From the iconic Hollywood Walk of Fame to the cutting edge galleries of the Arts District, there's no shortage of artistic inspiration to be found. However, beneath the glitz and glamor lies a city grappling with serious issues. Traffic congestion is a daily struggle for many Angelinos, with long commutes and gridlocked highways a common sight. The high cost of living, especially in desirable areas like Santa Monica or Beverly Hills, can be prohibitive for many residents. Homelessness is also a pressing concern. Despite these drawbacks, Los Angeles remains a city of dreams and possibilities, where the promise of a better tomorrow continues to draw in people from around the world. And with that being said, today I'm giving you a full video on the pros and cons of living in Los Angeles here in 2024. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Darren Kriz. I have a real estate marketing and sales team. We help clients buy, sell, and invest in property every day. If you have any questions about real estate or Los Angeles in general, feel free to reach out shoot us a text or an email down below. But let's just get right into this one. Pro number one, I had to include it right off the bat and that is the weather. Los Angeles enjoys a Mediterranean climate with mild wet winters and hot dry summers. The consistency of its weather is a major draw for residents, obviously providing a pleasant environment for outdoor activities all year round. The mild winters mean that outdoor activities such as hiking, biking, and beach days are accessible even in the cooler months, such as December to February, which in my personal opinion are the nicest months weather-wise in Los Angeles. I do like it a bit colder, and by cold I mean 60 degrees. That's what it's gonna be here in LA in the winter months, which is why a lot of people from the East Coast will be living in Los Angeles if you can afford it during that time of the year. Because LA does also offer this lifestyle of health and wellness because you can still be outside and get some vitamin D in the sunlight even in January and February. But the last two years have been a bit wetter, a bit rainier than in previous years. But even if the news does say there's gonna be a, a hurricane or a major storm coming in, it's only gonna last a couple of days and then we'll be right back to that nice sunny weather. But moving on, you don't wanna hear about the weather all day. Number two is opportunities. Los Angeles is a city of endless opportunities particularly in the entertainment industry. It is the epicenter of film, television, and music industries offering aspiring actors, musicians, and filmmakers a platform to pursue their dreams. I'm sure you guys have heard of people that move to LA solely to be an actor or an influencer to make it big out here, which a lot of people do if you have the right mindset, the right vision, you stick with the correct crowd, and you don't get sucked into the scene of LA, which can definitely happen as well. A lot of people do come out here to make it big, and it doesn't happen for everyone, unfortunately. But as I said, with the right people around you, with the right mindset, the right connections, you go out there, you can make any opportunity happen for yourself. I mean, this is known as the land of opportunity. So if you're gonna be moving to LA, La La Land, and want something more for yourself, for your future, your future family, I know a lot of people come to LA solely to do so. I mean, you never know who you're gonna run into as well on the streets here on the Sunset Strip or anywhere else in LA. You can meet someone that will definitely change your life completely. That's why you just have to get out there in the world, experience life for what it is, Make the most of every single day so that you can achieve all that you want to in this life. A little motivation for you guys, but let's keep on moving. Aside from entrepreneurship, the city also does have a thriving tech scene with numerous startups and tech companies providing opportunities for innovation and growth. Over in the Silicon Beach area, there are a lot of large headquarter office spaces for companies such as YouTube. And if you are working a nine to five and you wanna climb the corporate ladder, there are endless amounts of job opportunities for you to get comfortable in. But it does make LA an attractive destination for professionals that are seeking career advancement and not solely entrepreneurship. Because of how large LA is, there are endless amounts of different opportunities for you to encounter. And that's actually gonna be number three on this list, the diverse and different areas that you can explore. LA is a city of diverse neighborhoods. You don't have to live one specific life in a beach town somewhere in Playa Vista. If you don't like that scene, go over to Silver Lake and experience a brand new lifestyle and group of people around you on the east side. Each neighborhood has its own unique character and attractions from the bohemian vibe of Venice Beach to the upscale glamour of Beverly Hills. There is a neighborhood to suit every single taste 
and lifestyle here. The city's diverse population also contributes to the vibrant food scene with a wide range of restaurants offering cuisine from around the world. I know people that moved to LA solely for the food scene. There are a lot of foodies out there. I know a lot of people that don't even go on Yelp to look up food reviews. They'll go on TikTok because there are a ton of foodies and a lot of them are here in LA. It really will surprise you on the different types of food and restaurants out here from every culture that you can possibly imagine. You can go to a different restaurant every single day of the week for your entire life life and you still wouldn't have hit every restaurant that you wanted to check out in LA. The abundance of niche coffee shops and eateries also cater to those food enthusiasts providing a culinary experience that is both diverse and exciting. I am a cafe enthusiast. I like going to different coffee shops around LA, maybe doing some work, enjoying a nice latte, and maybe trying a breakfast burrito out in the city. I consider myself a breakfast burrito connoisseur and I feel like I have almost tried every single one. If you have any breakfast burrito recommendations, leave a comment down below. I feel like I've tried them all, but maybe I'll give your suggestion a rating. But as I said, with the diversity and different areas to explore in LA, it is massive out here. If you wanna live one life in Sherman Oaks and then a year later your lease ends and you wanna try out downtown LA, you will have a completely different experience from what it is. That's why one person's opinion on what they think Los Angeles solely is, you should never take it too seriously because the fact that LA does have all these these different neighborhoods will make everyone's individual experience different dependent on what they do every single day, how their lifestyle is, the people they meet, and the things they want to achieve. But we're gonna go on to the next pro, and that is the entertainment options. LA is a mecca for entertainment, offering a wealth of options for residents and visitors alike. The city is home to numerous theaters, concert venues, and cultural institutions providing endless opportunities for entertainment and enrichment. From the Broadway shows to indie films, there is always something new and exciting to experience in LA. The city's vibrant nightlife scene also offers a variety of options for those looking to socialize, go out to the bars, and have some fun. If going bar hopping on Main Street in Santa Monica is your vibe with the younger crowd, maybe early 20s to early 30s, and that's one type of scene. If the club scene is the vibe for you in West Hollywood, then go over there, live there, and you'll experience uh, something I'm sure you never have. Or if you like a casual hotel bar and lounge, Beverly Hills has a ton of those, and so does West LA. But there truly is something for everyone when it comes to going out, entertainment options, going to fancy restaurants, or maybe just going to a sports bar with a buddy and enjoying a few beers. Aside from the nightlife scene, there are endless amounts of comedy shows, maybe niche concert venues that you might not even know would be there. You can either go to Broadway in downtown LA and see all the different theater venues. Go to West Hollywood and see how many different comedy venues there are. Or in West LA, if you enjoy indie films, there are a ton of different theater options as well. All throughout LA, if you want to experience some entertainment on the weekends, you can find something that fits your vibe. And how could I forget the sporting events out here? LA is home to some of the best sports teams in the world. The Lakers, the Dodgers, the Rams, the Chargers, the Kings. They're building a new stadium for the Clippers right next to SoFi in Inglewood. The Rams are building a brand new practice stadium in Woodland Hills in the Valley. So all year round, 365 days, you can basically experience a different sporting event. I've been a huge diehard Los Angeles sports fan for my whole life, so I've been to hundreds of Dodger games, several Laker games. It's always a different experience and a phenomenal time going to any sporting event out here. But try not to get too sucked into all the entertainment options that LA has to offer because you still have to live your own life and work hard to pay for these entertainment options. But let's move on to number five, and that goes along with working hard in your own life, the lifestyle that you can live in LA. LA offers a laid back, outdoor oriented lifestyle that appeals to many. The city is surrounded by natural beauty with mountains, beaches, and parks providing ample opportunities for outdoor recreations. Hiking trails such as Runyon Canyon and Griffith Park offer skyline views from downtown LA all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Those are two of my favorite hiking trails in Los Angeles. I know some of you hiking enthusiasts will say, oh, those are the basic mainstream hiking trails, but honestly, I've been to a lot of hiking trails and those probably have the best views, especially at sunrise or sunset, that you'll see anywhere in LA. Baldwin Hills Overlook in Culver City doesn't get the credit that I think it deserves. And there are a lot in the Palisades, Malibu, that you can see great ocean views at. But when you first move to LA, Runyon and Griffith Park will probably be the first two hiking trails you want to experience. And maybe you'll see your favorite celebrity or influencer as you're hiking up the trail. Aside from hiking, beaches such as Santa Monica and Malibu do provide a relaxing escape to get away from the hustle and bustle in the city. The city's emphasis on health and wellness is reflected in its numerous yoga studios, 
fitness centers, healthy dining options, making this an ideal destination for anyone seeking a balanced lifestyle. Now I'd say LA is almost opposite from New York when it comes to living a balanced, healthy lifestyle. As you're walking down the street here in the city, you're going to run into a different juice bar, a different fitness center, whether that's hot yoga, Pilates, CrossFit, and all the above. In New York, every other block has uh, maybe a pizza shop or a bakery where you can get your favorite bagel. In LA, you're gonna see more people running in the morning. There are a lot of communities and groups that I know that do weekly running events. The Venice Run Club, shout out to them. I have a lot of friends that have made a lot of friends through mutuals, through doing community events, such as running in the Venice Run Club and they're actively training for the marathon right now coming up in March. But overall, LA does give that vibe of living a healthy lifestyle when it comes to being active, going to the beach, biking, hiking, eating healthy. There's a lot of vegan restaurants and options out here. And when you surround yourself with people that have that kind of energy, that want to improve their bodies, mentally, physically, you'll want to do the same, which can just benefit you in more ways than you know. So now let's move on to the cons, which I know a lot of you guys are here to learn about because there are a lot of them, but let's start with the first one. And that's the cost of living, of course. The high cost of living in Los Angeles is a major deterrent for many prospective residents. The city's booming real estate market has led to skyrocketing home prices and rents, making it one of the most expensive cities in the United States to live in. The average home price these days is about a million dollars in LA, and a million dollars will only get you maybe a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot, single story home in not the best neighborhood. Or you can get a condo in a decent neighborhood with a crazy HOA fee. But if you wanna rent a one bedroom, the average one bedroom cost is about 2,700, which can get you a decent one bedroom apartment somewhere in the city. But these high costs of living extend beyond housing, groceries, dining out, entertainment options, they're all a little more expensive than other cities, of course, which can put a strain on the finances of many residents, particularly those in the lower income brackets. But we, we do say that we're paying the sunshine tax out here. The tax of being surrounded by people that are also living in Los Angeles that want to better themselves. But now I'm talking about pros. I was supposed to be talking about cons. Behind me is the gas station that was actually known as being the most expensive gas station in all of the United States at one point in time. It's a little bit lower now, but still who wants to pay that price for gas. That's why I have an electric vehicle here. Shout out to Elon Musk. I mean, one thing that's really expensive is the coffee. I'm spending $9 every now and then on a latte in LA, but it's honestly worth it most of the time. If you're gonna be paying that much for your entire lifestyle living out here, find a way to make more money. There are more job opportunities that offer a salary that can pay you enough to live a decent life out here. So although the cost of living is high, the salaries are a bit higher in LA as well. And I know a lot of people do complain about the cost of living, but that should motivate you to strive to make more money in one way or another. Start a side hustle, get a second job, do what you can to be able to afford your cost of living and more. So you can look at these cons in two different ways from a glass half empty or a glass half full optimist or pessimist perspective. And for some people, an expensive cost of living will just motivate you to work harder and achieve those dreams that you sought out to live in LA for. Or it'll demotivate you and get you playing the victim game, stay in your room, play video games, don't do too much with your life. But in reality, that's just gonna put you even more and more in a hole. But let's move on to number two, and that is LA is very spread out. Now this is similar to the LA being a very large city in the pros category. But Los Angeles is a sprawling city covering over 500 square miles. It encompasses numerous neighborhoods and suburbs. The sprawling layout can make it difficult to get around, especially if you don't have a car. Public transportation options are also limited, but they're building more metro systems and subways in the area. Traffic congestion is obviously always an issue. This can lead to the longer commute times and the reliance people have on cars. The spread out nature does make it challenging to create that sense of community people are looking for, especially young adults when they move to a new city, which can lead to a sense of loneliness and isolation. If you have a friend that's living in Studio City and you live in Marina Del Rey, well, that's gonna be a tough friendship to keep around unless you're gonna be FaceTiming each other because it could be 45 minutes to an hour depending on the traffic. But if you plan on locations to meet halfway, whether that's West Hollywood, Westwood, Brentwood, you can figure out a way to make it work. And it really will take you about 30 minutes just to drive a few miles. I'm currently in the middle of the city, Beverly Grove area, West Hollywood, and it is gonna take me 30 minutes to get to downtown LA, which is where I'm going right now. But I would say pretty much everything is about 20 to 30 minutes away, honestly. You can live in West Hollywood, 
tell someone that you're going to Santa Monica and it'll take you about 20 to 30 minutes at times, depending on traffic from Beverly Hills to the Valley, 20 to 30 minutes. Time of day really does matter and day of the week as well. Let's move on to number three. This is a big one and that's meeting genuine people. Despite its diverse population, some residents in LA find it challenging to meet those genuine people or that community that I was talking about earlier. Authenticity is sometimes hard to find out here. The transient nature of the city combined with the focus on entertainment and glamour can make it difficult to form some deep, meaningful connections. This can lead to feelings of loneliness and isolation as well, particularly to newcomers moving to the city once again. And LA does have that stigma where people think everyone is just in it for themselves. There are a lot of selfish, inauthentic people that are disingenuous, and I sure have dealt with a handful of those people. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of those that move to LA and wanna make it big, so they're gonna do anything it takes, whatever they can to backstab others and try to get something for themselves. But in reality, you have to go through those experiences in life on the side of getting your back stabbed, or else you'll never learn and understand what people are actually authentic and what people actually are genuine. You have to go through the failures, you have to go through those experiences to know when you found a person that is truly gonna be a win in your life. And as a native Angelino, I've seen it all. There truly are people out here that want to meet others that are also as authentic, genuine, and friendly as you are. So don't let the people of LA deter you from moving here because you will find your specific group of people that you connect well with. You just have to get involved in the same communities and activities that of things that you enjoy, and you'll find other people that have the same interests as you and that just wanna make genuine friends. Let's move on to number four, and that is the traffic and parking. Traffic is obviously a big factor that strays people away from LA. I mean, I have spent 45 minutes in two miles of traffic, which does happen. It does cause a lot of frustration and rush hour traffic can be particularly bad leading to long delays and stressful commutes among many. Finding parking in LA is one thing that I'm gonna talk about more because make sure you don't go to Dialogue Cafe for two minutes without paying the meter or turning your wheels slightly to the specific degree dependent on the slope that you're parked on because I've gotten a handful of tickets on one specific street. I probably should have learned my lesson by now, but be careful in West Hollywood, Santa Monica, they will get you in those cities specifically. Parking alone can make it a logistical nightmare amongst residents if you want to go to certain areas, meet your friends, park on a specific street. You'll have to walk very far to get to a lot of different places. But the good thing about being in a huge city is there are Ubers and Lyfts everywhere that can come in just a couple minutes, but you will be having to pay more. But I also do know a lot of people that only Uber and they do not sit in traffic so that you can actually get some work done while you are in traffic. But with that being said, me putting a positive spin on all of this, a lot of us native Angelinos have learned to accept the traffic and get used to it over time. Put on your favorite podcast, put on an audiobook, blast some good music, and just enjoy the ride because you can only focus on the controllables in life. And if you can't control how fast you're going because there's another car in front of you going five miles an hour, then why don't you get some knowledge out of it, listen to a podcast that you've never listened to, learn a thing or two, to on your drive to work or get some good vibes, good energy going with your favorite music. As I've been saying, there's two ways to look at everything. You can either be frustrated about the traffic or you can enjoy the journey, which some people might think is a delusional way of looking at it, but if you look at it from a delusional optimist standpoint, then you'll be okay and hey, at least you'll be happy inside. So let's move on to the fifth and final con that is the crime and homelessness. Like many major cities, Los Angeles has its share of crime and homelessness. While the city has made efforts to address these issues, they remain persistent problems in certain neighborhoods. Homelessness in particular has been a major concern in LA, with tent encampments springing up in many areas. Crime rates vary by neighborhood, with some areas experiencing higher violent crime than others. If you don't know the specific streets or intersection that you're on, you might run into the wrong crowd. So just make sure that you are aware or you're with someone that's a native Angelino or that knows a thing or two about Los Angeles. Reach out to me if you want to know any information about a specific area as well. I know the city like the back of my hand. Give me a cross street, give me an intersection. I'll tell you if it's a good neighborhood or if it's not the best. But obviously the crime, the homelessness, the safety can be a concern for many that move here, especially especially those with families. Honestly, a few years ago, homelessness was at its worst in LA in the 2020, 2021 times, but 
2023, I would say, was a very good year, especially in maybe the Venice or the West Hollywood areas. They have cleared out a lot of the encampments that you may have seen in 2021. And although this is a pros and cons video, I see way too many cons on social media about Los Angeles specifically, so I'm here to tell you guys if you are not living in Los Angeles, if you're not actually living this life on a day-to-day -day basis and seeing all the bad that's going around in LA, you probably aren't the one that's commenting on those videos saying LA is trash, LA is going downhill. Which is why social media is just such a false perspective on what's actually going on, what the reality is of any situation, any scenario. And when you see someone online just hating on LA, trashing it, they probably have been here once in the last year or are just hearing things from others that have this pessimistic outlook on things. Well, with that being said, there's good to LA, there's bad to LA. We love it for its good side, we love it for the grit that it holds, but all in all, it is home. You can find a community that fits you. You can find things that you like because we are in such a big city. We have everything here. And if you have any questions about Los Angeles, if you learned anything at all from this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Reach out to me if you want to know anything about Los Angeles in general. I'll give it to you straight up. I'll be completely honest with my thoughts in the direction Los Angeles is going or in how I feel it is currently in this situation now because I've lived in several different areas all over Los Angeles from the valley to the heart of the city to the west side and I'm not one of those comment trolls that is talking about what you may see the mainstream media is saying about LA. Just wanted to make this updated video to tell people my thoughts on the current state of Los Angeles. Of course there's going be pros and cons, but there's pros and cons in any city. You're never going to be fully happy and content wherever you are. If you hate one city that you're living in, moving to another probably won't make it better for you. So I don't know, I guess this just turned into some sort of motivational video, but I hope you like this one again. I post some videos every week. My name is Darren Chris. have a real estate marketing and sales team. We help people buy, sell, and invest in homes every single day to this beautiful city that I call home. Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you did, comment below. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.